How do bearings work? Bearings are used to reduce the friction between two objects that are in linear or circular motion against each other. The first intuition came from Leonardo da Vinci in his studies regarding friction, but the first patent was filed only in 1794 by Philip Vaughan of Camarthen. Then, a Parisian bicycle mechanic named Jules Serret was able to patent the first ball bearing on August 3, 1869. This invention allows him to win the first cycling race in history, the Paris Rouen race. In this video, we will see how bearings work and which are the main bearing types. More than 10 years in the industry has led Jaius to become the qualified partner for some of the most important mechanical engineering companies providing any type of bearing from different manufacturers. Let's take a closer look at a classic ball bearing. By decomposing and sectioning it, its components can be analyzed. The first elements that immediately get our attention are the steel balls. They represent the rolling elements and they are held together by a cage which can come in different shapes and it's made of low friction materials. Then we have the inner ring, usually the one that moves, and the outer ring, both with a groove, which can be more or less deep in order to make the rotary elements glide. It is very common for the bearing to also be shielded the shield can be made of metal for dust protection, or it can be made of plastic, preventing liquid infiltrations. They are placed in specific locations between the two rings so that they can protect the balls and the cage from external agents. At the same time, they can retain oil or grease inside the bearing, keeping it lubricated for its entire life cycle. In order to work correctly, Bearings need a certain radial and axial clearance so that when they reach the working temperature, their thermal expansion won't lead to over-tightening, which would cause the bearings to wear, or in worst case, even a seizure. There are many different types of bearings, but the three main categories are radial bearings, angular contact bearings, and axial bearings. At the same time, rotary bearings can be divided into ball bearings or roller bearings. The three main categories just mentioned differ according to load direction. So, radial bearings are used to withstand forces which are perpendicular to the axis. Angular contact bearing are used to withstand both perpendicular and axial loads. And axial bearings are used to withstand axial forces. The rotary components of the rolling element bearings make the movement easier. They are balls, as shown before, but also rollers, placed between the fixed part and the moving part. Ball bearings are among the most used bearings. The radial ones can be classified as single roll bearings, the most common type, or double roll bearings, which can withstand high radial loads. Among the radial ball bearings, we also find the self-aligning bearings that have two rings of balls. This type has an inner ring with two grooves placed side by side, while the outer ring has only one hemispherical groove. This system allows the inclination of the two rings access during the functioning. There are also angular contact ball bearings that have either one or two rings of spheres. They typically have an oblique position respective to the axis of rotation of the load line passing through the contact points between the balls and the rings. They can withstand higher radial loads and axial forces. Finally, it could be noted that all these varieties have an axial configuration in order to withstand a mostly axial load. They are also called thrust bearings.
Another major type of rotary bearings are the so-called roller bearings used when very high accuracy is required. They have the same categories, radial, angular contact, and axle bearings. But roller have different shapes depending on the type. This is another difference between these and ball bearings. Radial bearings with cylindrical rollers are the most common type. If they have small rollers, they are called needle roller bearings, and thanks to their compactness, they are used when space is limited. They can only withstand radial loads. There is another variety, spherical roller bearings, which have cask-shaped rollers in order to allow inclining the rotation axis of the two rings. Tapered roller bearings are an oblique version and are used in case of combined load. This type of bearings are generally used in pairs and they usually have inverse taper. All of these varieties can also have axial configuration in order to mainly withstand an axial load. They are also called thrust bearings. There are many types of bearings. The most common ones are plane bearings, also called sliding bearings or slide bearings, are made of two different parts. They don't have rotary elements. In fact, they work thanks to a thin porous bronze foil, which is covered by a layer of Teflon. The foil is placed between two elements of the bearing. These bearings are built to withstand high loads and they can also bear misalignment. Linear motion bearings are designed to provide movement in one direction. They are usually called slides, and there are both linear ball bearings and linear roller bearings types. Magnetic bearings substitute rotary elements thanks to a magnetic induction, which allows them to be frictionless and avoid lubrication. As a result, they are very efficient in every condition, even in extreme temperatures but one should always pay attention to the curry temperature of the magnetic system. Bearings are one of the most used mechanical parts and there are many varieties of them. So it is important to consider the area of use when choosing the right bearing. The reference standard for bearings is DIN ISO 281, which provides a formula for calculation of bearings durability. Given the basic dynamic load coefficient of the bearing, C, the equivalent dynamic load, P, and a specific coefficient, which is 3 for ball bearings, and 10 thirds for roller bearings. This allows us to obtain the durability of the bearing expressed as millions of turns. The equivalent load, P, is calculated on the basis of the radial and axial load which act on the bearing. The coefficient of basic dynamic load is instead determined by the fatigue behavior of a significant lot of equal bearings. Bearings are always used on shafts and joints to keep them in position without causing high friction. If you are interested in the functioning of Cardan or constant velocity joints, watch our previous video. If you found this video useful, please let us know by leaving a like and a comment. You can also share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We invite you to visit our website, jazzcompany.com, to find out our upcoming projects.